you're watching hidden camera video of a thief stealing a holiday package. How you can prevent this from happening coming up. The countdown to the new year is officially underway. We'll show you how some Lexington businesses are getting ready to ring in the new year. The number of concealed carry licenses issued in Kentucky is rising. One gun store owner says that, that move is making people safer. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 530. If you are headed out tonight for New Year's Eve, bundle up. Looks like we will be wrapping up 2014 on a very cold note. Lots of layers are in order if you're heading outside tonight. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey's in here where it's nice and warm in the studio, but that will not be the case tonight if you're outside. That's exactly right. Um, one of those evenings where it's okay to be at work because it is much warmer in here, but it's a cold looking sunset. The final sunset showing up for 2014 that we're seeing now across the bluegrass state. Just a hint of some high clouds out there. Arctic sunset because we have such dry air is in place. This air that we have originated across the Arctic. It's modified, obviously, by the time it is uh, reaching the Bluegrass State because we don't have a whole lot of snow cover for it to cross into the Ohio Valley. So it moderates over that bare ground. Upper 20s this afternoon, as good as it can get for high temperatures for many areas of central and northern Kentucky. But bundle up with the wind chill that is already into the upper teens. And if you're out this evening, Wind chill at times may approach 10 by the latter part of the evening. Actual thermometers will be heading toward the low and mid 20s and then upper teens that show up by the time we ring in the new year, singing old Lang Syne around 19 degrees across the bluegrass state. Life first alert defender. Nothing is showing up as of now, but a big storm system is coming together across the southwestern part of the country. That'll roll its way toward the bluegrass state as we go into the first couple of days of the new year. So we're tracking the cold temperatures that. That we have now and the threat for at least some wintry weather as we get closer to your weekend. We'll break that down with the hour by hour forecast when I come back in about 15 minutes. Thank you, Chris. Police in London say they have a lead in a string of crimes. Our county by county coverage begins in Laurel County. The crime spree happened on Sunday in London. Police say a man tried to break into the Thompson Drug South store and were told he used an axe, then tried to kick in the door. And when that didn't work, police say he tried to use a pickup that had been stolen from Yaden's auto sales. A car was also stolen from that same lot. Even though they have a lead, police tell us they still want people who have information and tips to please call them. And in Jessamine County, a teacher who survived a life-threatening illness is hoping to go back to the classroom in August. Sean Carlstedt, who teaches at Rosenwald Dunbar Elementary, lost both hands and feet to the illness. The Jessamine Journal reports that Carlstedt has been fitted for two prosthetic legs and a hand. She tells the newspaper she's learning how to be more self-sufficient every day. Just a few hours, downtown Lexington will be buzzing with thousands of people getting ready to ring in the new year. Yeah, dozens of businesses will host New Year's Eve parties and dinners. We caught up with several of those businesses that spent the day setting up and getting ready for tonight's big countdown. For downtown Lexington, this will be one of the many hot spots on New Year's Eve. There's quite a few places to party tonight. We visited one bar that's getting ready for the big countdown. Managers Justin Thompson and Danny McQuarrie tell us tonight is going to be special. We normally don't have a DJ, but we'll, have, we'll bring one of those in um, later. We've got some balloons, some signs. We do plan to be very busy tonight. I mean, it's one of the busiest nights of the year. Everybody goes out, and uh, we're hoping to not only create drinks that people are going to enjoy, but something that you know our staff is going to be able to keep up with the uh, turn and burn throughout the night. The drink special is fitting for the start of 2015. It's called the Resolution, an original recipe by McQuarrie. It's, it kind of stems off of your typical Manhattan, so I kind of took a basic Manhattan recipe and just revamped it. You know, it's a, it's a little bit of sweet, it's a little bit of spiced. It's obviously got a really good, strong bourbon flavor to it. To get in tonight, pre sale tickets go for $25, $35 at the door. Tori Norse is getting a ticket, but she may not stick to one spot tonight. I'm not sure. We are gonna, definitely going to start here and then maybe go around downtown. So we'll see what happens. As for the bar, the prep work has begun and the fun is yet to come. And so I'm excited to see uh, how tonight goes. I think it's going to be great and I think it's going to set the tone again for 2015. Happy New Year in downtown Lexington, Miranda Combs, WKYT.
And for parents looking for something to do with the children tonight, Champs in Lexington has plenty of fun activities. Tonight, kiddos can skate, participate in grab bags, and watch a huge balloon drop at midnight. There's also laser tag and mini golf. Organizers say this is a great way for families to celebrate the holiday. A New Year's Eve is one of these cool events where, where kids, kids and young adults typically they get left out, and, and we encourage the fun. Champs will be open from 6 to 1 a.m. This Christmas season, we saw a rash of presents and delivered packages taken right off the porches and front steps in the Lexington area. Thieves were even following delivery drivers so they could quickly pounce on the prime targets. Well, here are some ways to protect yourself in the future. You were looking at one camera angle of hidden video taken by a homeowner of their front porch as they await a package. In this angle, you see a package waiting in front of the door. The effort paid off. From a second angle, you can see a suspect approach the house, sit on the ground to open the package, then quickly leaves the scene. Any package is fair game for them. They will take whatever they find and they will open it up at their own convenience. Some of them will waste no time and will open the packages right there on the porch or right around the corner, will discard the items that they're not interested in. And they'll strike in broad daylight. These thieves will oftentimes uh, target these locations between normal business hours when people are generally out of the house working, um, when there's no one around. Authorities say they have arrested groups of people who follow delivery trucks. They will actually go out in groups and follow the trucks and go from block to block with the trucks and have another person behind them and pretty much load up their cars. They will then go through the items and discard anything they can't resell. And pocket those expensive items that they can then resell on the street, either online or to other co-conspirators that are involved in purchasing stolen items. Postal inspectors say these crimes can be prevented. We encourage customers to request a signature service for their packages. We also recommend that if they can, have their packages delivered to their place of employment or ask a relative or a neighbor to receive uh, packages on their behalf. And one more thing to think about in the future, inspectors say this time of year many people send money as a gift and authorities are advising that you not leave outgoing mail containing a check in a mailbox that would be easily accessible to a thief. Follow WKYT online at WKYT.com. Join the conversation on Twitter and become a part of the WKYT Facebook family. They say business is booming. Gun store owners in Kentucky say the number of gun sales and enrollment in concealed carry classes are increasing. WKYT's Victor Puente tells us why one store owner thinks the increase in training is making people safer. It's a gift that packs a wallop. The staff at Evans Firearms and Archery says the holidays have had their business booming. Like other retail stores, you know, where um, the peak time of the year. But it isn't just the guns and ammunition that are in high demand. The store offers concealed carry classes and they fill up pretty quickly. Certainly there's a constant flow of people that are interested in, in uh, uh, taking a class. And a lot of reasons is for the safety concerns. According to Kentucky State Police, the number of people applying for concealed carry licenses has gone up each of the last few years. There's no indication that trend changed in 2014. By 2010, more than 200,000 people had applied for a CCW license, 20,000 that year. By 2013, those numbers had soared, with almost 320,000 people having applied, almost 60,000 that year alone. Jay Evans says the more people that take those classes, the safer everyone is. And we have a lot of people that take the class just for the safety information. The classes teach people how to respect the weapons and the damage they can cause. He also says keeping your guns secure and safe such as this one can protect children who might not know how seriously they should be handled. Or, or don't own a firearm if you don't, can't keep that secure. And In Lexington, Victor Puente, WKYT. Kentucky State Police expect to release the concealed carry numbers for 2014 in April. 
Well, as the countdown to the new year begins, WKYT's Bill Bryant is taking a look back at the politics that shaped 2014. And on this weekend's Kentucky Newsmakers, we will hear from Lexington's vice mayor about her leaving council. It's all in tonight's bottom line. Good evening. As 2014 wraps up in a few hours, many will always remember it for the aggressive politics. Big spending campaigns resulted in thousands of TV ads in Kentucky and around the country. And when the dust finally settled, Republicans had gained enough seats to take control of the U.S. Senate and elevate Kentucky's longest serving senator ever, Mitch McConnell, to majority leader. In Kentucky, Republicans failed to gain seats in the State House in Frankfurt. The Speaker's gavel remained remains in the hands of Greg Stumbo. The GOP did make more gains in the state Senate, and they tossed out Democratic leader R.J. Palmer of Clark County. A new era began this afternoon in Madison County when Republican Reagan Taylor was sworn in as judge executive. Taylor defeated Democrat Kent Clark in November. Clark had led the county through years of tremendous growth after being elected in 1993. Taylor was at WKYT today for a Kentucky Newsmakers interview where he says he he feels he answered a calling to run for office. I felt like that um, that I could uh, really make some some changes and make a difference in the lives of people in our county. Um, I prayed about it for quite some time. Uh, I really felt uh, felt called to do it, um, and uh, um, I, I was raised to if you feel called to do something, you go after your calling, and so we did. Also on this weekend's Kentucky Newsmakers, Lexington Vice Mayor Linda Gorton talks about stepping down after 16 years on the city council. She says the smoking ban and the fairness ordinance were two of the most important accomplishments during her time at City Hall. Kentucky Newsmakers will air Sunday morning. Governor Steve Beshear proclaiming 2015 the year of the woman veteran in Kentucky. The State Department of Veterans Affairs is planning events to call attention to the role and challenges of women in uniform. Bill Bryant, WKYT. A Kentucky politician receiving a big endorsement today. Congressman Thomas Massey endorsed Republican candidate for governor James Comer. Massey is now the second Kentucky congressman to endorse Comer's run for governor. Massey joins U.S. Representative Ed Whitfield in backing Comer's campaign for governor in 2015. It is not too late to donate. The Salvation Army has only a few hours left to reach its goal for the Red Kettle Campaign. The overall goal was $550,000, and so far, the organization has raised more than $551,000. Their online goal is $100,000, and as of this morning, they had raised just more than $90,000. And there's an extra incentive to give online. An anonymous donor has agreed to match all online contributions up to $100,000. Dollars.